Why can't they see the whole chat room though? This is, this is annoying. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we can check. Okay, today's master class on the law of attraction is going to be covering freaking out and finding a way. So, as you can imagine, right now there's a lot of commotion going on with the coronavirus and a lot of uncertainty um, about what's um, to lay ahead. So, the point of today's webinar for you is to to figure out how to handle all of what you're learning and hearing in the news, in addition to your own issues and fears that you have about the situation at hand, and how you're gonna manage like everything that is like your considerable normal day-to-day -day activities and work behaviors between your personal life and your professional life. So the, the, the thing is like you can't control everything, but within the law of attraction and a lot of the other timeless principles that we're gonna be covering over the next two weeks um, and into the next five weeks and the next forever, basically, I want you to start thinking, what is it that you are trying to achieve? If you are trying to achieve something other than worry and stress, fear and anxiety, anger, jealousy, who knows, any of the negative emotions, then you have to be able to focus on what it is that you want to achieve. And for a lot of people, it's not possible for whatever reason, physically or mentally, for them to process that idea of achieving positivity. For whatever reason, they could be stuck in so much negativity that they have to almost, they constantly will say it out loud or to themselves or both in any combination or manner, basically that it's not in their cards and it's not for them and that they are not that person. It might be for someone else, but it won't happen for them. And they might even go ahead and let this overflow and say it's not going to happen for anyone else that they know. And if someone were to think that they would be able to escape, right, that, um, that circle of like, no, it's not for you, then they're going to put them down. And they're going to do the best that they can, whether they want to realize it or not, that they're putting down other ideas for people and for themselves that are considerably much more positive than the situation they deal with. Now, again, if you can't even begin to think that something positive could be coming soon, then the next best thing is neutral. 
if you can get to neutral, then at least you're not in pain. You might not feel good, you might not feel happy, but at least if you're in neutral, you're not hurting. You might still be confused and you might still not have a direction of where you want to go or you need to go. You might not even be able to move really very well. You might be very stuck, but at least if we can get you from pain and hurting, anger and fear and um, turmoil, we can get you to neutral. And if, once you get into neutral, you're going to have a lot better chance of getting toward positive and being able to allow yourself to think that it is possible for you to achieve something completely different from where you are at at this point in time. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. I know you have been thinking these things and been feeling this way for quite some time. For some people, they have been stuck in so much pain and anger and frustration and not allowing themselves or not knowing how to express themselves. So for now, at this time with the coronavirus coming and scaring everybody with, with is it gonna happen to them or someone they know, um, what, we, what we need to focus on is what we can control. We can control our own actions and we can control our own thoughts. We can't control the behaviors of other people, but we can control what we are working on within ourselves. And that is gonna give you a lot more confidence because being able to move forward confidently is gonna increase your chances that you make better decisions. And better decisions are going to start having a greater effect over you like an umbrella. When you start making decisions that are wise and in the best interest of you for right now and for the greater good of the people around you, you're going to see that universally this is gonna work out. The universe wants you to be positive or at least neutral, okay? Everything has a balance and for every action there is a reaction. So yes, if everything was all happy-go-lucky and just, you know, there was no negativity, then there would be no experiences for us to learn from and to level up and to have that amount of confidence and security. And so it's, it is sad to say that, that sometimes we do need these negative experiences to learn and grow from. But what we can do is try and minimize the amount of pain that we go through as this must occur. And why must it occur? It's just the way the world is, okay? When we find ourselves getting stuck in anger and we feel that we are justified in being angry and allowing ourselves to be stuck in anger for extended periods of time and we allow ourselves to feel justified and, and righteous in inflicting our anger our anguish and our pain, our anger and our feelings of emotion that are, are upset and, and haven't healed. When we push that onto other people, we aren't letting ourselves heal and we aren't helping someone else. We are just making things more difficult. You must force yourself to find a way to either say nothing at all if you have nothing positive to say or remove yourself from the situation. And it's very hard sometimes to physically remove yourself from a situation such as the coronavirus causing everyone to feel quarantined either by, it, you know, it's you must stay home, your government told you so, or in best practice. Either way, it's really hard for a lot of people to be stuck indoors every day. And you need to be able to find a way to leave, whether it's in your mind and you find your own place, that you, you get into your house, Personally, I've always enjoyed going to the bathroom and just sitting there with the door shut and with the lights off and just trying to recollect myself. Um, other people prefer going into their bedrooms. I've heard people go into their beds in closets. I'm not a big fan of going under things or having to crawl away. Uh, I just need a moment of quiet space. So sometimes that means if I can't get away, I'll put my earbuds in because even earbuds will allow me to be in the same exact room as the family members because there's five of us here and I can still hear enough to what's going on because there's I won't actually turn them on but I can still feel like I have that buffer and it gives me that sense of peace sometimes that I need to to find my balance because again we are not trying to bring any more negativity to the situation at hand we want to go through life feeling like we are living to the best that we can in a way that is bringing us some kind of joy, making us feel some kind of happiness about being true to the way we wanted to live when we were kids, basically. Um, what is it that you would do every day if you could? 
that would not bring you really too much pain and it wouldn't cause anyone else really pain, okay? Because that's the point of life. We, we don't really actually know. There is no written thing that says this is why you're here. Other than for you to be like, you are here and you are aware, you're conscious of the fact that you are here and aware. And with that, that you could do just about anything you put your mind to if you have the patience and the time to continue to chip away and learn about all the skills that you need in order to, to get where you wanna go. Whether it's a career change or you're just starting out, you're young, you're older, it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. You just need enough time and belief in a process. And if you do not have that right now, that belief or a process, then the only way to get it is to start modeling yourself after people who have received that success and that level that you're trying to achieve. It's not considered copying because copying would be down and out, going out and trying to be somebody. You don't want to be somebody else. You want to be you. You just want to be you where you feel like you have that confidence and that ability to replicate cool things that you can do that other people will appreciate. And in this day and age, we're heading into uncertainty. And people trust things that are reputable, that have ex uh, exceptional quality, and that are consistent, okay? So if you have something that you can do really good, and you can make sure that you are consistent, reputable, and quality as well, then we can figure out a way for you to then scale. Scaling yourself online, or in person when things return to normal is gonna be a great way for you to increase your ability to earn income and help your family find a way. When you can't find a way to earn income in person because you're quarantined, the only other way for you to earn an income that I can see viable and that many others actually succeed in is to work online. And for you to be able to find a way to look at your business or what it is that you're doing right now that could be a hobby or something that you're just interested in, or maybe even you haven't even started yet, but you want to learn about it. You can become that person who does take themselves online. And yeah, it's scary, but there's a lot of different degrees of online. You don't have to be always on video. You can do audible, you can do um, text and video if you like, you can do any combination. But the point is that you have to start figuring it out and writing it down and documenting. I'll say it every time. You have to know and document so that you can adjust what works and what didn't work from the last time. And I personally, <clears throat> I don't like documenting and being all like rigid like that. I really don't. I'm very, very free form, introvert, extrovert, and INFJ. I just love to be creative, okay? So being rigid and forcing myself to create spreadsheets um, so that I could learn how to replicate what I'm doing to make it easier for myself and one day pass these, these steps to someone else. So whether it's in your home life and you're teaching kids how to replicate routines that are good for them and for their everyday school routines, studying, and then adult life habits, work habits, or whether you are an entrepreneur and you're struggling with your business, these are things that you need to do. Everyone is looking around for what's that secret that's gonna make them more money and make them the most successful point of person they could be. And it's from what I have learned from over 610 hours of listening to Audible books. I want you to know everything I know, but I, I wish I could give it to you this quick, but I can't. So that's why we're here doing these free webinars. And the idea is that we're gonna do a 30 minute webinar for free every day at 1 p.m from Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, every week, okay? Um, in a couple weeks, I'm gonna roll out a new program. It's only gonna cost $21, and it's gonna catch you all the way through a whole month. And it's gonna really be even more detailed and specific about what we're talking about in these free webinars. These free webinars are designed not to overwhelm you. They're designed to give you the opportunity to see another chance, that there is a different way of having a business run, whether in person, online, or a blend. And I want you to see that when you're freaking out online um, at reading all of this coronavirus stuff and you're scared and you don't know what to do and you don't know where your next paycheck is gonna come from, I want you to start thinking that all those times you've ever heard of someone and you thought it was an overnight success, it really wasn't. It took a lot of time for that person or group of people to learn what they needed to know in order to become successful. 
overnight. My goal here with you is to help make this transition where you are going to become knowledgeable in what it takes to become successful overnight, right? So we're not trying to create anything overnight, but we are trying to make you understand what it takes so that when people try and knock your ideas down, you can continue pushing forward. And you're gonna learn how to structure a routine that doesn't make you feel like you're going too crazy. I mean, it's inevitable, it's gonna happen. It just happens, it happens, okay? When you're starting an empire online or in person, there's a learning curve. But that's why I have these free PDFs that I'm going to be showing you. So I do them in black and white with minimal color, and then I do a lot of like journal pen color over. So, whoops. And some of my notes come from other places. So if you recognize this one, this one actually came from, uh-oh, I don't have your info. I'll have to get it from the company because I want to make sure I give proper credit when it's something that I didn't make. But like this one here, I made for a day planner and it has the hours from 10 a.m. until 7 p.m. marked every half hour from Sunday through Saturday, five weeks in a row. So you can see a whole month schedule at a glance. Yes, you might need glasses, kind of small. Um, on the back side, again, you can see I've already started coloring it in, and it just has a different color layout. Horizontal bars versus the um, vertical bars. Same exact thing. Um, what else I wanna offer people is the, in my free PDFs, did I say they were free? They are. Um, I'm gonna have the opportunity to send you, or have you like email me, or you can click my download link, these PDFs. This one is my pride and joy. I know it's huge, I'm a little OCD. The goal isn't to check off every single thing. The goal is just so that you can see one day all the way through 31 days, right? And then there's the different daily task checklists. Like um, every day, make sure you follow up with all incoming messages and then just check it off, you know? Um, check your inbox on your email. Make sure you've checked all running ads because you wanna make sure that there's, there's no problems, you're not overspending, that nothing got delayed or paused or what's the word, um, denied. You're gonna be looking at check friend requests on different social networks, review your different social network status updates. Um, if you're gonna be doing any kind of new posting or blogs, you're gonna be checking keywords and hashtags. We're also looking at how else can you repost or repurpose your content Elsewhere, we're looking at how to share new content, how to create surveys, and how to help create new projects. Um, when you are able to figure out how to communicate with people, whether they're personal or professional networks, you're going to be able to understand what they need better, and then it's going to help you figure out how to get what you need better. Okay? Um, on this one, this is a heavily uh, social media uh, influenced, I guess you could say, um, checklist. So it's also gonna also have some things like practice three times my new skills. So we wanna make sure we're staying fresh with things that we're learning. Uh, additionally, practice three times my strong skills and practice three times my weakest skills. So this could be areas like public speaking. It could be how to speak in front of a video camera for live streaming. You might wanna just say three times a day today, I'm gonna pick out um, a five minute block where I'm gonna practice recording myself on video and then I'm gonna watch it. And a lot of people don't want to do the, the recording. They don't want to watch it. They don't want to spend about five minutes before the recording planning what they're going to say or reading a topic that's going to give them inspiration to just talk freely. So if you can do this, um, you know, you're going to really become a lot more comfortable and confident and your goals are going to happen faster because a lot of the times we're our own worst roadblock standing in our way. Okay, it's true. Uh, additionally, we want to make sure that if we're doing posting, that we're going to be looking at doing post status updates by 8 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m., 5 p.m., and 8 p.m. If you want to go more beyond that, totally fine. And if you want to go past 8 p.m., fine. But ideally, you know, if you're trying to really get engagement with your audience, whatever platform you're on, that's where you're trying to be. Otherwise, you're just going to get drowned out in all the other many posts that people are going to be paying attention to. Um, you should be also looking at your ability for questioning and answering with interaction online. Pick any area, again, a social media network, and start searching for people who are having issues. Look for keywords, hashtags, and 
you know, search the comments and see what you can do to provide value to that person that day without selling them on what you're doing. If you're trying to give them something free, fine, but we're going to really try and provide value and just work on, on that before we ask for anything. Um, next, we're going to be looking at on social media, making sure that you take time to share and comment, you know, reply at least one, two, three, three times a day again. You want to spend time visualizing where you're going to be in three weeks. That's going to help keep you focused and help keep you on task with, you know, your current goals and why you're doing them. It's going to help motivate you as to like what you need to be doing and hopefully keep you from just falling into that, that point where you're just like, Oh, I haven't been doing anything for like months. Where did I go? Like, you know, we don't want to fall off the face of the earth. <clears throat> Additionally, you want to look into writing and sending daily email stories to people that are on your email list. We want to start getting into a better um, place where people expect to hear from us and they expect the, the kind of quality and content that is going to become consistent from letter to letter. Okay. We're going to uplift and enrich the people that we are trying to become connected to. Uh, next, we're going to be looking at creating new podcasts, mini episodes. Again, if you are, let's say, doing hair, you don't necessarily have to do all your blogs and podcasts and articles all about hair. There's a lot of different parts of you that make you the way you are, and interests are exciting. People like to know more and more and more about a person rather than just only about one particular area. Let people get to know you as the hairstylist. That, that you have, you can be trusted, I, you know, as like myself, I am an American Board Certified Hair Color Specialist, and I have been doing hair since 1999, and I just absolutely love color correction. I just love fixing messed up hair. And in addition to that, I really like sewing. I like making flat paper patterns and drafting something completely off of your body measurements so that it fits you. I love fitness. You know, I love working out. I love dancing. I love going outside. So these are all different things that could become spinoffs that I could connect to that I do hair and own Northern California's first pole fitness hair salon called the Paradox Parlor in Manteca, California. So you just got to think, what is it that you do that you can connect, even though it might seem totally far out there? That's what's going to make you different. That's your differentiator. That makes you different from all the other people, all the other businesses that you feel like you're just stuck in the same seat of how do I stand out? You stand out by bringing out more of you and what makes you, okay? And then we figure out how to blend that into your business. Uh, finally, we're going to look at, you know, what can you do to do more? Um, how can you be in more places at once is basically the idea. So if you get into self-publishing, again, with the podcast, writing material, sending it out, then your voice and your personality and, and what you stand for and even what you sell or make or create is with you also. And I'll be able to tell you more about how to tag that along in a little mini bio. Um, but the idea is that you're going to start rereading your notes and rereading everything you document so that you can make this up here, remember it without even having to try so hard. Hey babes, you need to go on out. Sorry, it's like six year old. I talked to you about this, you need to let me finish. And I promise I will talk to you later. No, you can't. And you're gonna be having a conversation with me later. Jeez. It's like the minute the computer's on and they know that the, the video's on, they have to make sure that they're on as well. So, um, the you know, fighting, freaking out and fighting away. We just have to realize that one, things are never gonna be perfect. Two, I mean, look, my hair, I'm just not, I'm having a hair and skin moment, okay? I'm about to be 40 this year and it's just letting me know. So if you feel the pains of being stuck inside all day or turning a certain age, a birthday, I don't know, the weather's bothering you, I want to hear from you. Please send me a message. I want to hear from you. So send me that message to my email, mygoals at willpowerisbeauty.com. My goals at willpowerisbeauty.com. I want to hear from you. So make sure that you've taken notes, share your notes with me, share your goals with me. I don't know, share it, what's your birthday and what you're stressing about right now in addition to the coronavirus, okay? And we will get through this. And maybe one of these days you'll see me with my hair done 
properly. And until then, I am Teresa Ornelas, owner of the Paradox Parlor in Manteca, California. Make sure you attend our next free webinar tomorrow at 1 p.m. Bye.